Beware the Ides of March, indeed. Well, it has been a year. It's the year that it seems we all joined the Brady Bunch, who were ahead of their time. And I should point out that tomorrow in the Opera in the Pandemic panel, uh, we will have the composer of the first Zoom opera, Kamala Shankaram. And uh, she's also done VR operas, and we'll be talking about motion capture and real-time CGI and more, including opera by snail mail. Working from home, uh, we have The Isolator, and tip of the hat to Terry Harvey for pointing this out to me. Uh, you get oxygen, you get uh, freedom from distraction, quite an apparatus. This was the year we all stopped dressing up, and not just for watching TV. And this was the year of positivity, the latest in the positive column Discovery Plus and Paramount Plus, which led the New York Times to say that plus might be a minus when naming your streaming site, and they say it's fallen into cliché, but of course it might be a cliché to say that because Adweek said the exact same thing two years ago in 2019. Uh, this was the year that a JPEG file sold for $69 million in NFT mania, non-fungible tokens. This was the year that Quibi started to offer short programming on smartphones. And sadly, this was the year that Quibi died. This was the year that Cyberpunk 2077 was also something that came and went very quickly. Uh, Google no longer selling cardboard VR. Um, the public broadcasters are closing the Institute for Rundfunktechnik in Germany. Um, very sad about that. MPEG is no more, says this headline. It, definitely Leonardo Chiarleone has moved. He's now pushing uh, artificial intelligence for coding for motion pictures, and we have a presentation on that from Mike Zinberg and some others. Uh, Slingbox discontinued their hardware system, and the New York Times stopped doing TV listings, and I have to say that has definitely affected my TV viewing. Um, linear TV has plummeted in popularity, but still dominant form of viewership. And this is based on research from Omdia. Omdia appears in one of our presentations from Soho Media Club. Uh, every year I talk about the Super Bowl, so let's talk about the Super Bowl in 2021. And definitely down, um, drew only 96.4 million viewers, including streaming, the lowest since 2007. Um, so seems terrible, but if you look at that number, it's actually the 15th largest U.S. TV audience of all time. And even though it's the most streamed Super Bowl, um, the 5.7 million streaming has yet to break even 10% of the number of viewers. Uh, similarly, when there was this interview, it was chosen to be on broadcast TV. CBS carried it. Here is um, a list of streamed programs, and you can see that the top three streamed programs are not original series or movies, but um, TV series left over from broadcast. And BBC Three, when they went all digital, uh, their audience dropped by 70%, which is a significant number. Now, who watches the most digitally? Well, the common thought is that it's uh, something like the millennial generation or even younger, the uh, iGens. Um, but, and certainly as a proportion of what they watch, the iGens uh, have much more digital than uh, traditional linear usage. But if you look at the greatest generation, this is the people even older than the boomers, uh, they watch many more hours per week than the iGen, so they actually consume more digital media, even though it's a much smaller percentage. Here is, uh, every year I talk about the latest in high frame rate. We are now up to 70 trillion frames per second. I think the last time I mentioned it, we were only a little over 10, mil uh, 10 trillion frames per second. 
in the opposite direction, this is the longest known exposure. Eight years and one month, somebody put a pinhole camera in uh, a telescope uh, dome and forgot to um, take it out and develop it. Uh, tip of the hat to Ed Grogan for pointing this out to me. Uh, do we want a display that can display 30,000 nits? Uh, well, it seems that it's possible whether we want it or not. And in terms of equipment that came out this year, this is one of my favorites called Crew in a Box with so many people doing their shows from home. You send this to the home. It's got a lighting panel. It's got a prompter, a camera, two microphones, but everything gets controlled remotely. So you can actually control not only the lighting intensity, but the color temperature. You can mix the microphones, adjust the teleprompter, and so on. This appears to be just a spiral staircase, and it is just a spiral staircase, but what's interesting is where it's located. It's inside a truck, a two-story production truck from M&J System Technologies, and one of the interesting things about this, because they have the two stories, they can keep it to just 40 feet in length, which means that it's legal to be towed by even a pickup truck. Here was another device that came out this year, Novetto Systems Sound Beamer. Uh, no one hears this except the person that it's intended for. And Sony came out with a spatial reality display with eye tracking. At the virtual CES this year, one of the products was the Samsung Bot Handy from when you just can't stand the idea of pouring your own wine. Uh, this was Cadillac's uh, electronic uh, VTOL, vertical takeoff or landing um, sort of vehicle, I suppose. And then in a more traditional vehicle, we have the Gentex Mirror Integrated DVR, just the thing that we need, uh, something to distract you from your driving. And at CES, uh, the Consumer Technology Association released their figures about next-gen TV. And notice that as a percentage of total digital television, it is uh, currently just 2%. Um, so that actually, it's even less than 2% uh, today. That's It'll be 2% in 2021. Um, so, hmm something interesting. Uh, it'll probably be discussed in Matthew Goldman's broadcasters panel, and Telos also has a presentation on new content creation palette for audio, thanks to Next Generation TV. Uh, Verizon briefly told users to disable their 5G to preserve the battery and then deleted the tweet, and we will have a bunch of presentations and roundtables about 5G. This is the Content Authenticity Initiative, which a uh, number of organizations got together to promote. And here is technology available to consumers now. Uh, MyHeritage.com offers this deep nostalgia. You send them a picture and they will turn it into a video. And then at the right is a way of mapping uh, dance moves onto your body uh, from the uh, Get Sway app, and that's from Human AI, and Human AI has a presentation uh, which I highly recommend. And one of the things in the presentation is no need for dubbing or subtitles anymore. You can have your actors speak whatever language you want fluently. Not all are adept at using this new technology that's available. This was a um, common trope this year, unmute yourself, available in bumper stickers and uh, coffee mugs and so on. Uh, here's a New York Times report on the Gotham Awards, one of the first of the awards season. Uh, with an, Am I supposed to talk now? Uh, this is Representative Tom Emmer of Minnesota at a House hearing. Uh, this you may have seen. It's a uh, court proceeding in Texas, and the lawyer is the one in the bottom right quadrant of the screen, and he's saying, I'm not a cat, and he can't figure out how to remove this filter that makes him look like a cat, and the judge is trying to help talk him through it. And then some think they are adept at the uh, upper right of this one, another court procedure, this time in California. There's a surgeon who thinks that he can do surgery and appear in court at the same time. The court had a different notion about that.
and some are overly adept. Here we have a, uh, there are lots of online classes, and some apparently are being taught by professors who are dead. And it's not just humans who are having problems. Here's an AI system uh, that confused a bald head for a soccer ball during a live stream. And this is the duh headline of the year. Um, Brits are streaming more under lockdown. Really? And it's not just Brits, of course. Global streaming skyrocketed in March of last year. Um, but there are consequences to this. So there's some research here that Netflix binges mean a um, two billion plus electricity bill. And we have a presentation on uh, that from Workflowers. I recommend you have a look at that. Um, here's another one from BBC, ditch high definition and new tech to fight climate change, saying that high def uh, uses about eight times more, or generates eight times more in emissions than standard def on a phone. And because the world was streaming more than ever, it was straining the internet. And so YouTube and Amazon Prime decided to forego streaming quality in order to relieve European networks. And it wasn't just in Europe. Here are Americans who don't have very good internet access. So people were driving to parking lots outside of libraries and cafes to try to get on Wi-Fi. Uh, so Starlink thinks that they can solve this problem. They have low Earth orbit satellites and therefore they have low latency and uh, they can offer uh, pretty good speeds. But to do that for a lot of people requires a lot of satellites. And so on the left, you see an astronomer's uh, photograph of the night sky, and all of those diagonal streaks are satellites going through them. So um, SpaceX has decided that they can do some things to mitigate um, dark sat and visor sat, or a couple of the things that they've come up with. But astronomers are still very leery about all of these satellites. Uh, Prismian, meanwhile, back on Earth, has set a new record of uh, one petabyte per second on a single fiber, and uh, that sounds really great. Um, but here's a Welsh village where an old TV caused the village broadband to go out for about 18 months, or uh, caused it to go bad for about 18 months. So U.S. lawmakers have recently introduced a bill to make high-speed Internet available to all. And you might not have noticed in another bill that was passed uh, late in 2020, the spending bill, uh, one part of it was uh, about copyright, and it proposed to um, have felony crimes for people who uh, pirate streaming services. And that did pass as part of the bill. Uh, here's an interesting use of copyright protection. Beverly Hills police are playing Beatles music so that if someone tries to post what they did online, it will trigger uh, Instagram's copyright filter and it will be taken down right away. Um, other copyright stuff, this is not exactly news. You can see that the date in here is 2017. But um, copyright can present interesting problems for the cloud. This is someone who um, shot uh, educational games, I mean, uh, athletic games that were done by educational institutions, Ohio Sportsnet, and uh, was not able to access his content because of a copyright case totally unrelated to anything that he did. So the cloud is very secure against flood and earthquake and fire and tornadoes and even war, but not necessarily so secure against law and economics and decisions and whims. We have uh, quite a bit on the cloud at this year's tech retreat. Uh, what kind of whims? Well, here we see a judge declining to force Amazon to resume hosting Parler. And uh, question, is TikTok still banned in the US? And Huawei? appealing the FCC edict, naming it a national security risk. So all kinds of things can happen. And finally, uh, we have ultraviolet TV for fish at the University of Queensland. And again, a tip of the hat to Ed Grogan for calling this to my attention. 
And any questions? Let's see. Uh, Mark Cholis wants me to mention that on Thursday, I will be doing a meetup and uh, that should be available on the home page. And I think that's it. So thank you very much. I was able to make up the time.